Okay, so today's job is to make some suspension for the pony truck. Now, when, when I went through all the parts uh, that were available, I got quite excited because I thought, oh, we've got we've got the suspension we need. Uh, it looks about the right size. That, that should be perfect. Unfortunately, when I actually uh, went to assemble it, what we, I don't know if you can see, but the, um, the, the top leaves are actually quite a bit longer than, so that's it, that's in line on that side, uh, they're quite a bit longer than they should be. So I'm um, not really sure what those leaves are for, they may not even be for this kit. So I had a look round on eBay and I found a supplier that had 12 mil under 12 mil spring steel. Um, the thickest they, they did is 0.6. I guess I'm trying to say 0.65. So um, this is annealed high carbon steel. Now I've got a feeling when if I take this tape off it's going to go springing everywhere. So what I'll try and do is keep keep some clamps on this so it's under control all the time but my plan of action basically is to um, I'm hoping I can cut it by bent shears 0.6 should be okay I mean it is high carbon but it, it is annealed so hopefully it should be okay so we'll um, cut it cut um, some, some pieces to length okay so I've got quite a nice setup um, sorted out um, I'm taming this the spring steel strip with two um, engineers clamps. So what I'll do is, as I as I need to unroll some more, I'll just un loosen one clamp, slide it, slide it underneath here, and then reclamp. So there's there's nearly always two clamps. So hopefully that will keep it under control. Then I feed it through through. To here and then I've, oh, and I've, <laughs> and I've set, set up an, an end stop which is 100 mil from the blade and that, that then gives me a nice 100 mil long piece of spring steel so that, that should should then go about there so that's the, the width between these is about 100 mil so that should be perfect so I've got a little production production line ready to go now, so I'm quite happy with that. So that that actually proved to be very efficient. Um, I've made eight leaves there, and they have got taken a, a very slight set because of the how they were coiled. So I think I'll take advantage of that. I'll um, try and keep them in that orientation and try and harden them. That very slight sp spring set, and that 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 will probably be fine. And my little um, end stop worked great. Um, I, I actually I didn't show it, but this this is the square I used to to set up this piece square, and because it's got the the stand on it, which is also ground, um, that makes it quite easy to set things up parallel to the to the blade. So that's quite handy. This this plate isn't actually attached, it's just literally held in place by the by the clamp. So that's so this is the um clamping setup for drilling drilling the uh, the springs. So they're clamped clamped at this end nice and tightly together. Um, unfortunately they've spread a bit at, at the other end. So I'm hoping as I push the drill through they'll they'll come flat. So we'll, we'll give it a go. It's a bit sketchy, but hopefully it should be OK. Uh, so that did work until we got to the last one. The last one's starting to push down. So uh, I'm not sure there's not a lot of meat on the end of that. So I'm not sure if I can clamp that, but I'll give it a go. So a li little bit precarious, but I've put another toolmaker's clamp right on the end. Um, and that seems to have held it all together quite nicely for me. So. So, uh, yeah, better to be lucky than good. <laughs>
a slightly less sketchy setup to, to drill the middle hole. So these are all these holes are five mil. So, um, this is high carbon steel, so it's quite tough. But um, so I'm using some uh, cutting compound, the the Rocol RTD, and uh, I've got quite sharp drills, so it seems to be going through no problem at all. So I'm quite pleased with that. And that's the third hole done uh, at, at this end as well. So hopefully we're all in the right place. We'll go and offer it up now and see what it looks like. So I've got them roughly fitted at the moment. So obviously we've got all the springs on one side and there's, there's no helper springs. But, you know, they are working as springs, so hopefully once we've actually made them, hardened them and so on, put some spaces in, I think we'll get, we'll have something, something reasonable there. So today's job is to um, heat treat the suspension leaves, the leaf springs. So I'm going to heat them up until they're non-magnetic. I've got this uh, magnet on a stick here. When they are non-magnetic, I've got a glass jar full of paraffin, so I'm going to quench them in paraffin. I've been told paraffin is a bit less um, severe than um, water, so we'll give that a go. So that seems to have gone reasonably successfully. I'll let, let those cool down. Uh, the next thing we need to do is to heat, heat these all to 350 degrees centigrade and then allow to, to sort of uh, cool down quite slowly. So I think this, this area will be quite useful for that because it's retaining its heat quite well. Long. These feel a bit harder, so I'll, I'll pop these in and then try and anneal them. So I've got about 200 there in the back at the moment, so we'll just gently heat it up and try and get it to 350. <coughs> We've, we've managed to maintain that at 350 for some some period of time. <laughs> what I'm going to do is just block that up a little bit, just so that it cools down a bit slower. We'll just leave that to naturally cool down now. We won't quench it or anything. That's had about an hour to cool down. Let's have a look. Uh, that is just slightly warm. That's how they've come out. They seem to be springy, so it looks quite good. Yeah, they seem to be holding their shape. This is the test piece. seem to be springs. So after a bit of fiddling around I've come up with um, 
I'm going to use four of the leaf springs that I've just made. And basically the, these are two really, not really springs at all, they're just spacers, but that's what I had in the kit. Um, might be too strong. So I've, I, as you can see, I've just roughly fitted these springs here. Um, so, that, so there is some compliance there. Maybe not enough. It's very difficult to tune the springs until you know how much weight's actually going to be on them. But we we have got suspension there. Yeah, there is some movement. Um, we are supporting the axle boxes. So I think I think for now that's good enough, and we'll probably come back to this um, as part of the shakedown for when the locos complete. If I make some more springs, I'll probably put a bit more curvature on them um, because there's not much compliance there before they, they're flat. So I think perhaps shaping the spring so it's like that traditional elliptical shape. I mean, they, they did have a slight curve from where they were on the roll, but I haven't deliberately put any more curve into them. So I think in the future that might be a good option to do. But anyway, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. That's my first attempt at making a leaf spring. Hope you found it interesting. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.